We're going to learn how to add shine and texture using our nodes today, but before we do that, let's make a very simple model to practice on. This is our default cube. I'm using the middle mouse button and moving my mouse around to get different angles of the cube. I'm going to make the cube into a very simple planter, the one that we looked at when we were talking about mapping. I'm going to hit the tab key. That takes us down to edit mode, remember. I am going to change to face select, which is this little cube, and just click the bottom. Using the S key and my mouse, I'm going to scroll in and then left click. Front view, number one on the keypad, and there's the shape of our vase. I'm going to do something very similar to the top. I'm going to move down so that I can see the top. Right click, I, scroll, number one, and now we need to lower this, but we can't really see what we're doing right now. So it's very simple. By hitting the Z key, that takes us to wireframe mode. And now we can see what we're doing. E for extrude. Drag the blue arrow down. Now see how this goes straight down instead of at an angle like we want? So we have to use the S key again and scale that in so that it looks just right. Hit the left mouse button. Get out of wireframe mode. We can also do it this way. Go back to materials. And there's our planter. Go ahead and map your planter or vase. It can be whatever you want it to be. And if you're not feeling like a mapping guru yet, just refer to the mapping video because this is exactly the same model that we use there. I'm actually starting from where that video left off. Here's our planter. We want to define two materials, one for the dirt, I'm in face select mode. I right clicked to get the dirt highlighted. We can see the dirt on our mapping thing. And we're going to go over here and we're going to add a material new and call it dirt. And assign that material. Back over here in this pane, I left clicked. I'm going to use control I to highlight the rest of the planter, not the dirt. Go over here to the right hand pane and do plus, new, I'll call it pot, and assign that. You can make your materials and assign them before you map or after you map. Now let's go into the node editor and we'll see what's happening. Sometimes you have to scoot the little nodes around so you can see what they're doing. Get enough room. So let's make our material for the pot first. With pot selected, we're going down here to diffuse. Instead of using the default, which is diffuse, which basically means the texture itself, like bricks or dirt or whatever you're doing, we're going to do a mixed shader. That makes a place for two different textures that can be combined to make a different, more interesting texture. So in the top one, we're going to click on that and we're going to choose diffuse. And in the bottom one here, we're going to click on that and we're going to choose glossy. 
So now we have places for two different textures or the same texture going into the mix shader and that's how we're going to get our shine. We need to add a texture of course so that we can see what's going on and so we're going to add a texture image texture we did this before it might look a little familiar then we're going to connect the yellow nodes this time to both the diffuse and the glossy and that's our image texture so let's open an image texture that we're going to put on our pot I've been a very good girl and I cleaned up my file for you so it won't be so confusing. Sorry about that before. We're going to open. I have my files easy to get at in C. Remember that if you click on the button that looks like the little pictures, you get pictures. Okay, we're going to use Amber Rock. If you can use a seamless texture, that's a great thing. And if you have a graphics program that will make seamless textures out of non-seamless textures, that's even a better thing. Happily, mine does that. So I've made this rock texture into seamless, and you'll see why in a minute. So we now have our texture hooked up to our node pattern. If you look over here, you can see that basically here mirrors here. So if you wanted to you can change things over here in this panel. I don't ever do that but that's a perfectly legitimate way for you to work if that's easier for you. Also whichever node you're clicking on you'll see information for that over here. Again I always do it right here so that's what you're going to see me doing. Remember, we're going to need a texture to bake too, so we might as well go ahead and make that now. Over here in the UV image editor window, we're going to go to image, new image, and again, this is a small model, so a 512 will be plenty big, and it bakes much faster, which is especially handy if your computer isn't of the hefty variety. Not alpha. And then we're going to add texture, image texture. This is our texture to bake to. And open that up. And it says untitled. Oops, we forgot to name it. Let's go back over here. I'm going to call it pot with dirt. And we'll try again. There we go. So that's all set up. If we go up here and look at material, we see there's a texture on it. Great. Now we're going to do the same thing with the dirt. Go to dirt, down to diffuse, mix shader. I always put the diffuse in the top slot it makes no difference at all but it's just my habit and so that's how mine's going to be if you want to do it the other way that is cool again we need to add texture image texture and this is going to be the texture for the dirt we're going to connect these again yellow to yellow yellow to yellow it looks black now because we haven't picked out a texture and over here it looks pink and pink means there is no texture so don't let that worry you yet we just haven't got to that step I'm gonna open this go to C and this is my dirt texture Now there's dirt on there. Okay, very cool. Now the texture for the pot looks quite nice, just as it is, I think. But the texture for the dirt looks a little large. Let's zoom in on that so you can see that better. See, a little large. So I'm going to show you a little trick in case you want to use it for many other projects. We can add input. 
texture coordinates, add vector mapping. If we hook, this time it's a violent node, if we hook these little guys together vector to vector and over here we want UV to vector, we can change the coordinates here to make this tiling texture be different ratios. So let's change this to 2 and Y to 2. There! Now it looks a little more realistic. That's a great trick to know. Again, we need to add texture, image texture, so we have something to bake to. Now you can see that we have three textures in the list and we're going to pick pot with dirt. We have the two textures that go on the model plus the image that we made to bake to. We have our model made, we have our model unwrapped, we have defined our materials, and we've set up some basic node patterns with texture. So we're about ready to do a test bake to see how we are doing. Let's make sure that we have each one of our image textures as the selected texture. So then we can forget about this for a little while. And we need light. Now I already have a light pattern that I use a lot. I'm going to turn on all those lights and the plane. And here's what I have. This is pretty much like what we used for our picture frame, except that we don't have the wall. And I've added some extra lights around so that there will be light all around the model. Now that I'm looking at this, that looks like a very big flower pot. So let's back up a little bit because this would be a good time in my real working process where I would be going, oh, that flower pot is too big. Go into object mode and I'll show you a quick way to make our flower pot smaller. We want to select the flower pot and we are in object mode. That's important. If you go all the way to the top of this pane, by the way, the N key turns that pane on and off. In case you lose it, the N key gets it back for you. This tells us the size of our pot. And we know that the default cube is 2x2x2. Two by two by two, and so that's pretty much what this is. And that's a really big flower pot. So let's make this uh, 0.6 and 0.6. Now let's look at this in rendered mode. Okay, that's a little dark. Going back to material mode, let's fix that. I should say that frequently we are fiddling around with light sources <laughs> when you use the Cyclos Render. You're fiddling around with light sources a lot. So since it's too dark, I am going to, I clicked on the the large the large area light source it says area over here and i'm going to make that a thousand okay and then we'll look again and see if that helped yes much better in case you want to set up your lights to look like my lights. I will click on those so that you can see what's going on. These little guys are point lamps and they are all set at the default which is 100. So I have four point lamps and then the area lamp that we used pretty much for the picture frame. If we look from top view you can see how things are. And I'm going to move this guy so it's right in the center. That gives you a nice even bake all the way around on a three-dimensional item.
Now, if you'd like to, you can change your render sample to a higher setting, like say 100, and rebake, save the texture, and save the model, and upload them to the beta grid or the actual grid, and test your model. I'm going to be leaving you now, but I'll be back very soon, and we'll learn different ways to enhance the textures on our rock and our dirt. See you then.